Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope that you are having an amazing time and you are doing great. In today's episode, I am going to talk through a book called A Man Called Ove and it is written by Frederick Pakman. I had already covered one of his books and this is the second book of him that I am covering and uh, I must say that all of his books are just amazing and um, they have so much power in them and they they express in their own unique style his own unique style so let's get started some of the few of the lines that i really loved starting lines is that um, you miss the strangest things when you lose someone little things smiles the way she turned around in her sleep, even repainting a room for her. That is such a beautiful statement that um, little sad that uh, you miss the strangest things when you and that is such a detailed statement, detailed sentence that um, you miss the strangest things when you lose someone, little things, smiles, the way she turned around in her sleep even repainting a room for her, the little small things that we will miss when we lose someone that we never thought of missing. When uh, we, with the thought of uh, losing someone, we may think that we will miss this big thing or that big thing or remember that very big thing about that person. But um, we, we remember smallest, smallest things about the people. Then uh, also this book is about how uh, the thinking gap and uh, perceiving gap is between uh, the generation gaps uh, in different generation how people used to think and think and um, behave and uh, have uh, perceive the world and perceive the thoughts. So um, there is um, there is one uh, sentence about that. Nowadays, people change their stuff so often that any expertise in how to make things last becoming superfluous quality, no one cared about that anymore. So uh, how, it is about uh, how an old man can feel in, um, in a once he comes in out alone in a completely new world that is um, of a new generation. And um, if they change their mobile so often as we change our mobile so often and old people had this um, very good habit of uh, using the same things for a quite big period of time. Uh, one purchase they used to do a quality purchase and they used to use it for a pretty huge amount of time. So um, how he will feel about that thing that is there. And then uh, these are small small things the writer has taken and this writer always takes care of these small small things which makes the novel so so very special then but when a conflict has been going on for long enough it can be impossible to sort out for the simple reason that no one can remember how it first started so this is again um, a very theoretical but very good point that when a conflict um, a conflict a fight has been going on for a very long time very very long time that no one actually now starts remembering the uh, core reason of the conflict and um, no one it is impossible to now sort out because from where it started no one knows now and uh, for the simple reason that no one can remember how it started. So it is just uh, the conflicts that have been going on for a very long time and um, uh, when it uh, forgets its main reason and it diverts from that reason and pick up another reasons then it is really difficult, impossible <laughs> to sort out. Then uh, okay, let me go through a few more things. And now he stands there, running his hands over her gravestone, again and again, as if he is trying to rub her back to life. It is a very emotional sentence that um, 
Now he stands there running his hand over and over a, her gravestone and again and again as if he is trying to rub her back to life. It is such an emotional sentence and I think that whole paragraph is very emotional. Once you start really digging into someone's past, you usually find something they would rather keep to de themselves. Sometimes they would rather forget. So it is a very interesting point uh, to be noted that once you start really digging into someone's past, uh, you start um, excavating uh, someone's past, uh, past and you start noticing someone's past you usually find something that they would rather keep to themselves because while they are telling about their past, they sometimes give away some information that they would rather keep it to themselves and sometimes they would rather forget. So the person who is telling about their past, maybe many times he is telling about those points um, that the person would really like to forget. It is difficult to admit that one is wrong, particularly when one has been wrong for a very long time. So that is just a self-explanatory but really good point in the book. So here are a few of the lines which I really love all the time. Means these are all-time favorite lines of my mind. So I'm going to read those. Loving someone is like moving into a house. At first, you fall in love with all the new things, amazed every morning that all this belongs to you, as if fearing that someone would suddenly come rushing in through the door to explain that a terrible mistake has been made. You were not actually supposed to live in a wonderful place like this. Then over the years, the walls become weathered, the wood splinters here and there. And you start to love that house not so much because of all its perfection, but rather imperfections. You get to know all the nooks and crannies. How to avoid getting the key caught in the lock when it's cold outside? Which of the floorboards flex slightly when one steps on them or exactly how to open the wardrobe doors without their cracking? These are the little secrets that make it your home. And uh, these are really beautiful lines that, uh, that are when a uh, relationship is compared with um, uh, a new house and a house and when it's new that uh, you start loving it for all its um, beautiful things and perfections. But over the years, you, you start realizing its small things that makes you happy and makes it as it is. And you start accepting it and loving it for its uh, really being there and its, its existence, its existence and uh the you get so attachments with it and uh, you love it so much not because of its perfection or amazingness or greatness or um such superiority things but um but rather you love it for what it is with with its imperfections and um its small things its small habits its small behavior it's small uh, the values that it holds that you uh, like or even if it's imperfect still you love it for what it is and that is a uh, one of the most most beautiful uh, sentences i have um, read so far then there are few more sentences that i would like to read Death is a strange thing. People live their whole life as if it does not exist. And yet, it's often one of the great motivations for living. So, um, yeah, it is a very good thing that nowadays, uh, I have started noticing in uh, many novels, the concept of death so, so openly spoken and 
so often spoken that uh, are talking about the death and here also it is talking about death death is a strange thing people live their whole life yeah because i also live my whole life as if it does not exist and yet it's one of the great motivation for living because for living death exists knowing that uh, it gives even good motivation for living and uh, just a few last lines love is a strange thing it takes you by surprise so a little small things like that it really makes this book really very special thank you so much for listening to me and this video watching this video i wish you a wonderful day or night wherever you are thank you so much bye bye take care see ya